Alright, this one's gonna be a short video. Number one, Nissan. If you've been following the news over the last three months or so, you might have heard that Nissan is on the verge of bankruptcy. Thanks a lot, Goshen. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this one because I think several other YouTubers have already done a much better job narrating about what went wrong. Check out their videos if you care to learn more about Nissan's downfall. In short, Nissan lost its way and started building shoddy cars in the 2000s. The only reason they haven't completely capsized yet is probably thanks to their high volume sellers in each class like the Nissan Rogue, Altima, and Sentra. Let's hope that Nissan can somehow turn things around so that we can see another generation of a new Z or GTR. And please, for the love of God, real quick while I'm on this subject, stop charging way too much for those two cars. They're 10 plus year old platforms with severely outdated tech. Don't get me wrong, they're cool cars, but for the price, you're getting into some really stiff competition. Number two, Renault. So this one's kind of a no-brainer since I already mentioned Nissan. For those of you that don't know, Renault and Nissan have merged in the late 90s, I think it was 1999, hoping to ignite a fruitful relationship. Fast forward over a decade or two later, and it's still not the case. Sure, Renault's little EVs are doing fairly okay, but that doesn't mean they're in the clear yet. Despite both Renault and Nissan selling millions of cars worldwide, that doesn't always mean they're profitable. Both companies have to restructure and redefine what it means to own a Renault or Nissan. Otherwise, both can still keel over this next decade, and I'd hate, hate to see that. Number three, Holden. All right, this one's already dead, and it's kind of sad. After 89 years, Holden, one of GM's Australian brands when they merged back in 1931, has finally been axed. And to be honest, I think I can make an entire video of why I think GM will go bankrupt again, seeing as I work with a lot of their former employees and got to hear some of their horror stories. Anyways, back to the subject at hand, Holden has over for the last decade been struggling in the Australian market due to n numerous reasons like globalization, cor corporate policies in that country, etc. And it certainly doesn't help that GM as a whole has been declining in sales worldwide. It only made sense in the short term for GM to cut Holden from their lineup, and if it wasn't going to be profitable, why bother keeping them, right? So GM, get your shit together. Number four, Ford. Well, let's hope that this does not happen. Ford has been somewhat struggling for quite some time. I mean, it's become quite evident with them slowly cutting and or phasing out their entire sedan lineup, focusing on cars or models that yield a profit. Their credit rating is about to drop, their profits are dwindling, and now that I'm talking this out, the car industry as a whole is struggling, man. If one of the original car manufacturers of the world has never gone bankrupt before, but now is on the verge of failing, what does that say about the car industry? Are we somehow at fault? And number five, Buick. All right, let's be real. None of you in the United States care enough about Buick. I mean, I'm willing to bet that all of you growing up dreamt about any other car in the world before you ever dreamt about owning a Buick. No offense to you Buick owners. Actually, I don't care because you don't exist. Like, just imagine someone out there right now is probably fantasizing about a Prius before they even remotely dream about a modern Buick. In fact, Buick has become so irrelevant that even Buick themselves are erasing their moniker on some, on some of their cars just so they could sell them. Lord have mercy on their soul. It also doesn't help that they don't really fit well in GM's current lineup either. They're not the most luxurious brand, that belongs to Cadillac. They don't have the most fancy SUVs or trucks, that's GMC. They don't have fun cars, that belongs to Chevrolet. So why do they still exist? I don't know man, selling 200,000 cars a year is still okay I guess, but I mean, that's largely thanks to China for keeping them alive. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to make a quick video to gather your guys' thoughts on the car industry and what other brands are struggling to remain relevant. Again, please leave your comments down below and I'll be sure to love a few of them. Until next time, peace out.